Hello, and welcome to part two of our Evolution of Pokemon documentary. If you didn't see part one, go check it out at our primary channel, Game Domain, and take a look. Now let's get on with the rest. In 2005 came Pokemon Emerald, which was the third edition of the Generation 3 Hoenn games. Emerald is very similar to its Hoenn counterparts, just as Yellow and Crystal were in their generations, but you instead faced off against both Team Magma and Aqua, and at the end you summon Rayquaza to stop the battle between Kyogre and Groudon. Post-game you are also given one of the greatest features in Pokemon, the Battle Frontier. Have fun spending hours battling in here. With the release of the Nintendo DS, Game Freak decided to give us another new world to explore. They introduced us to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which take place in the Sinnoh region. You can choose from Lucas, the male protagonist, or Don, the female protagonist, and another tree professor named Professor Rowan. Your starter options this time around are Turtwig, the grass starter, Chimchar, the fire starter, or Piplup, the water starter. You fight Team Galactic and stop Cyrus from draining the power of the three legendary Pokemon, Mispri, Yuxi, and Uzelf, in order to summon one of the two legendary Pokemon, uh, Dialga in Pokemon Diamond, and Palkia in Pokemon Pearl. Beat the champions and you can catch a bunch of different legendary Pokemon, and through glitch exploits in the game, maybe even some mythical Pokemon. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl introduced us to even better graphics than before, and jazzy music with the new limitations available on the DS. Game Freak was able to expand on their ideas for Generation 3 and create what they wanted to be the ultimate generation. Every song in the game is filled with fun and excitement, and some towns and routes have different themes for day and night, as this game combines the day and night and weather cycles to create a realistic feel. After the praise of Diamond and Pearl, Game Freak was ready to develop a third version. They wanted to base this game off the elusive and powerful legendary Pokemon, Giratina, who was sent into the alternate universe by Arceus due to its disruptive behaviors. Pokemon Platinum's story follows closely to Diamond and Pearl's, but the ending is completely its own thing. You enter the distor Distortion World, the trickiest puzzle in Pokemon, and face off against Giratina, catching it if you would like. You go off and face the Pokemon League to become champion yet again. Fans were also given another remake during Generation 4, Pokemon Heart Gold and Pokemon Soul Silver. These games are considered the greatest Pokemon games of all time, as they take the greatest sequel of all time and enhance it like crazy. It shows fans the Johto adventure in a whole new way, whether it's the graphics, music, or the fan favorite feature that debuted in these games, walking Pokemon. Any Pokemon in the whole game could walk behind the protagonist along their journey. After the huge success of Generation 4, Game Freak gave us the first generation that was hated by the majority of fans, Generation 5. Pokemon Black and White took place in the Unova region, a region based off of the diverse landscape of the United States, from beaches to forests to plains and to big cities. Black and White's graphics were very similar to Generation 4, and the music was great as always. You play either as Hilbert, the male protagonist, or Hilda, the female protagonist. Professor Juniper, yes, uh, another tree, or at least a shrub, is the first female professor and gives you one of the three first companions. Snivy the grass type, Tipig the fire type, or Oshawott the water type. Take down Team Plasma and catch either Pokemon Zekrom in Pokemon White, or Reshiram in Pokemon Black. You will then become champion and can explore some inaccessible parts of the Unova on the coast. Instead of a third version to Black and White, Game Freak decided to recreate the story in the form of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. You start off in a different town and as a different protagonist. These games are said to take place in the same timeline as Black and White, but one Unova is in a different kind of trouble. As either Nate, the male protagonist, or Rosa, the female protagonist, you are to stop Team Plasma from fusing together either Zekrom in Black 2 or Reshiram in White 2 with the legendary Kyurem. Capture the legendary and you can keep it fused or defuse it for two powerful legendaries to help you for your quest to be champion. With the launch of the Nintendo 3DS came Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, the first installments of the sixth generation of Pokemon. You play as either Kalem, the male protagonist, or Serena, the female protagonist, and choose between one of three starters. Chespin, the grass starter, Fennekin, the fire starter, and Froki, the water starter. Your starter is given to you by Professor Sycamore. Yep, another tree. Uh, and your journey brings you to the feet of Team Flare, the evil villainous gang headed by their incognito leader, Lysandra. You are once again trying to stop the capture of the legendary Pokemon, Xerneas in Pokemon X, and Yveltal in Pokemon Y. After capturing the legendary, take on the Pokemon League and you will be crowned champion. There's 
basically no post game, but this game added a ton of new features. Fans could now indulge in a Pokemon world that was in 3D. Everything popped out at them and gave them the feel of being there in the journey. The competitive world of Pokemon was also popularized in this game, as it introduced Mega Stones and Mega Evolution, which gave fan-favorite Pokemon a special power that makes them evolve to a more powerful version. Generation 6 also gave us a remake of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire as Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. These games followed the same story as the originals, all the while enhancing the graphics and showing fans the Hoenn region in a new 3D look. But with the introduction of Mega Evolution, these games are said to have taken place in a separate timeline, almost like an alternate universe. The fans were treated with a great post-game, which included the Delta episode, as well as being able to catch almost every legendary Pokémon ever released, using the Eon Flute and the Latias Latios soaring features to venture to different and previously unexplored islands. These islands were home to portals created by the mythical Pokémon Hoopa, and legendary Pokémon came out of these portals. In 2016, Game Freak gave us the 20th anniversary Pokémon games, Pokémon Sun and Pokémon Moon. You play as either Sun, the male protagonist, or Moon, the female protagonist, and venture out into the tropical archipelago known as the Alola region. You have to take down the evil team Skull, which is based off of a real street gang. I mean, they got into the bandanas and everything. After taking down Team Skull and the Aether Foundation, headed by the evil Lusamine, you will free the world from the Ultra Beast invasion and be able to catch either Lunala in Moon or Solgaleo in Sun. Generation 7 gave us some new features, the main being Trials and Z-Crystals. This was the first reason, region in which gyms were absent and instead they were replaced with Trials. Each Trial would reward you with a Z-Crystal, which then, when partnered with a move of its respective type, creates a super powerful move that dominates anything in its path. Generation 7 also gave us Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which may be the most unpopular Pokemon games yet. The fusion idea was brought back from Black 2 and White 2, and the two legendary beasts are now fused with a legendary Necrozma. The story is more centered on the Ultra Beasts, and there are a decent amount of differences. The Warp Ride feature was introduced, in which you ride on either Solgaleo or Lunala through Ultra Space and can travel thousands of light years in order to encounter legendary, UBs, and even increased shiny chances. So throughout Pokemon's 21 year history, there have been many new features and changes introduced in each new game, and we will now get to see what the Nintendo Switch can show us about the world of Pokemon. The Pokemon anime has always been important to the fans, as they love to join Ash Ketchum along his journey to be a Pokemon master. It all started with him getting Pikachu as his starter Pokemon, making Pikachu the most popular Pokemon almost immediately. This put Pikachu's face on everything Pokemon, and just about everybody and their dad has heard of Pikachu. Ash has come such a long way in his journey and has met a ton of new Pokemon and friends. Each region comes with different friends and new Pokemon, as Pikachu is the only Pokemon that Ash has kept with him throughout all of the episodes. There have been a total of 20 different movies, with number 21 coming in 2018, and each of them have connected with the fans. Pokemon, the first movie, impacted so many fans, and even got a bunch of fans into the games themselves. The movies and anime have evolved so much over the years, whether it's the stories, graphics, or music they always have a way to delight fans. And the anime does not get the credit that it deserves, as the anime is probably how at least 40% of fans got into the series, and which eventually led them to buying the games as well. Over the years, the anime has changed and impacted many fans, and everybody loves watching the kid from Pallet Town and his Pikachu. Pokemon merchandise is something that can be found in just about every fan's house. Whether it's a t-shirt, lunchbox, backpack, plush, poster, pillow, bedsheet, the list goes on. Over the years, there has been more and more Pokemon merchandise released, and the market still remains as big as ever. Nowadays, you can take just about anything and slap a Pikachu on it, and it will sell big. Nearly every single Pokemon has a plush of their own, and are each beloved by at least one person in the world. Kids even go to school with Pokeball backpacks, or a lunchbox with Charmander on it. If you walk into a Toys R Us, or maybe a Target, you can find a whole section devoted to Pokemon items. Nintendo knows how to sell things, and Pokemon is a big part of that. There are even foods that are made to look like different Pokemon. Pretty crazy, right? Nintendo has even sold some of their own consoles with special Pokemon editions. They've sold Pokemon Nintendo 64s, Pokemon-inspired Game Boys, and Game Boy Advances, Nintendo DS with Palkia and Dialga, or the Sinnoh starters, and even Nintendo 3DS with X and Y or Aura designs. Some of these consoles are even the rarest Nintendo consoles ever. The bottom line is that the market for Pokemon merchandise is huge, and it looks to keep getting bigger and bigger. 
And then there's also the Pokemon trading card game, which has released hundreds of millions of packs worldwide and got so popular that they created a TCG online. Each pack has their own theme, and the cards keep getting rarer and rarer as the years go on. For example, an original Charizard card can be worth up to tens of thousands of dollars. People enjoy collecting the cards, and it is a big hobby in their lives. There are also international TCG championships, in which the game's greatest masterminds come together with their best decks and try to outsmart the others. The TCG keeps getting bigger and bigger as well, and the older the card, the more money it could be worth. Pokemon has changed so much over the years, and some fans like the change, and some don't. With the new Pokemon Switch title right around the corner, there are lots of changes expected to be made. Some fans are excited, and some fans are hesitant. They don't want the world they love so much to be ruined, or to be changed so much that it's like a whole different game. But either way, fans are still joined together by that special link cable, the love of Pokemon. So what did you think of today's documentary? How has Pokemon impacted your lives? Do you play Pokemon? And if so, how did you get into the franchise? Do you want to see more documentaries like this? Tell us in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And we would also like to ask you to go and check out our new second channel, Game Domain News. GDN will be where we discuss weekly gaming updates and news. And if you like it, check it out and subscribe. We hope to see you next time, and as always, thank you for watching Game Domain.